So welcome everyone to this panel discussion uh, where we will present Project Silva. It's a new initiative by the Linux Foundation's branch in Europe. Um, and we will also discuss uh, trends and patterns, cloud native patterns and trends such as uh, sustainable operations, uh, green ops, that are gaining traction in the, especially in the cloud native ecosystem and uh, that are also integrated in uh, Project Silva. So um, without further ado, um, I will let our panelists today uh, introduce themselves. Um, maybe Philippe? Okay, hi everyone. Thanks, Nikki. Uh, my name is Philippe Ponsarguet. I'm a Chief Technology Officer at Orange uh, Business, so the enterprise market company of Orange Group, and I'm leading the technology strategy. All right, good. Is this working? No, not really. Not really. Let, let's try it. All right, so they gave me a fake mic. <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> On purpose, of course, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Tim Irnish. I uh, work at SUSE. Um, we are a uh, provider of open source based infrastructure solutions uh, in, the, uh, in the Linux and container space. And I'm the product manager in, uh, for, for Telco Edge uh, for our Telco Cloud solution. Hello, I'm Jonas Oninen. I work for Nokia. And I'm responsible for uh, our open source activities. So I'm head of open source initiatives, uh, initiatives in Nokia. So we run the Nokia SOSPO and run our uh, contribution coordination <laughs> and our activities uh, externally and internally on open source. And uh, I'm Nikki Manoledaki. I'm, I'm a software engineer at Weaveworks. I was previously a maintainer of the EKS CLI for Amazon. Uh, and I'm a contributor to the CNCF Environmental Sustainability uh, Technical Advisory Group, um, as well as the GitOps Working Group. So uh, first, we're going to introduce Project Silva. We have a couple of slides just for this part um, that Philippe will present uh, now. OK, I will do it um, in standard mode. It would be more convenient for me. So, uh, what is Project Silva? So, Project Silva is an industrial grade uh, cloud native platform to cover, I would say, telco and edge use case. So, it's a project that has been started nearly 18 months ago uh, in a closed explanatory uh, mode uh, by uh, five carriers. So, it's about uh, Deutsche Telekom, Telefonica, Telekom Italia, Vodafone, and Orange, plus uh, two network vendors, so Ericsson and Nokia. And um, it has been set in uh, open source uh, at uh, Linux Foundation Europe. It's the first hosted project by the Linux Foundation uh, Europe. And um, it has been open in last uh, November. So basically, the project is quite new. And um, most of the contribution has started at the beginning of this year. So you may see that the, the core challenges we want to manage is about simplify and automate uh, the operational model. It's about reducing the fragmentation, working on interoperability, reduce the cost. And we have two two key cores, I would say, outcome. The first one is to define a framework where we can, I would say, put the story in a box with all the prerequisites. And the second outcome is about having a reference implementation and um, integration and validation playbook, OK? So um, what is really important is to understand that the, the prerequisites that are at the heart of the, the Silva project is basically to cover 5G, uh, open run, and edge cases. It supports, I would say, um, specific hardware needs on network cards or in GPU, for instance. It's about supporting a natively um, a bare metal, multi-tenancy, um, service mesh enable, uh, high advanced security. And something that is very important and the purpose of the talk of today is about the sustainability. If we move on the next slide, um, we, what is important here is just to say that, okay, uh, Silva is a project uh, that is born, I would say, uh, between the hands of uh, telco uh, and network vendors from Europe, but it's absolutely not Europe bounded. So um, if the overall roadmap is driven uh, by, I would say, this ecosystem, it's really open to everyone and it's very important. And on this slide, you may see that there is a room for everyone, whether you are in hardware, in telco, in integration, uh, ab about the network function, or if you are in integrators, there, there are room uh, absolutely uh, for you here. Um, 
And something that is very important as well, um, the idea is not to deliver a product nor a solution, okay? So the implementation uh, reference that uh, is in the project will be, I would say, productized and developed and uh, instantiated inside the different, I would say, telco flavors. On the last slides, uh, what is really important, if we want to bring uh, some information about the track of records, uh, I think that in basically, uh, three months, what have been done, it's uh, to have uh, 160 members in the Slack channel, so it's a lot of people and a lot of discussion. You may say that uh, we have more than 150 um, uh, features, uh, 750 addition code, so co commit basically, so it's, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, we have uh, four validation platform under creation and three from different companies. So above the, the, the seven initial uh, companies uh, at, the, at, the, at, the at the initial phase of Silva, we have uh, nine other new companies in just, I would say, three months. Six uh, work groups, so we have uh, the implementation, we have the validation, we have the security, we have the communication, we have the governance, and of course, a dedicated uh, working group on sustainability. And Nikki, you are part of this one. And uh, perhaps the last thing to share, uh, so uh, by this summer, the idea is to have the first version of the framework. We already have an implementation reference that is working on OpenStack and on VMware, and the idea is to have um, a new one um, this summer uh, that will cover the bare metal topic. So uh, here is for setting the stage about uh, basically what is silver. Thank you very much. And also we have um, a QR code here if you'd like to uh, look at the GitLab repos for Project Silva. And there you'll find a uh, white paper, the governance structure, how to join the meetings, uh, the Slack channels as well, etc. cetera. Uh, and it's basically GitLab Silva projects if you don't want to scan the QR code. Um, let me, okay, so um, given that we have um, different perspectives here from the telco cloud, uh, uh, telco ecosystem, it would be really interesting to hear uh, your thoughts, Tim and, uh, and Yona, on, on, on this, on Project Silva. All right, so yeah, um, so, the reason uh, my company, SUSE, is, is we, we are involved in Silva is that uh, we, we are building uh, open source based infrastructure platforms that, that we think can be used for the telco industry as well. We are finding ourselves, when we work with our customers, we're finding ourselves solving the same problems over and over again in slightly different ways for different customers. And I think we've seen across the presentations today that basically everybody in the industry is doing that, right? Everybody is faced with the same problems. Everybody is solving them over and over again. And that's what makes a project like Silva interesting from my point of view, because it is a common proving ground for existing technology, uh, figuring out how to set everything up, how to uh, configure things so that certain use cases become possible. Uh, and essentially distilling all that into code that then is available to everyone. Uh, either as a reference in the sense of where can I look to in order to find out how, how I need to do things or basically just using it straight away um, and uh, uh, sort of uh, inspire, either getting inspiration for your own product or just using it as is. So the industry can benefit a lot from a project like Silva uh, because it can be a common denominator for information exchange and also implementation um, and, and that's why we are there. And for Nokia, we've actually been active in different kind of open source um, uh, cloud infrastructure compatibility projects very much from the beginning, uh, kind of like starting with uh, OPNFV, then CNTT, what became Manuket, and now, of course, Silva. And in Silva, we've been actually active since the very beginning, as Philip showed, we were one of the uh, two vendors that were active or participant to this um, from the kind of like from the get go. And in Silva itself, um, we're active as well. We are uh, have Yoni Hamelainen in the TSC, and we are um, have a Sounderikanan who's running the working group 
uh, four, which we will be talking a little bit more about, which is the energy efficiency working group in the Silva. We believe a lot on the cloud infrastructure compatibility and like uh, Tim said as well, doing things one time and doing the things the right the one time. And therefore we believe that the Silva is an, uh, is an excellent um, activity, um, especially as we have a lot of the key operators from Europe who are coming together and who are looking at that, what are, what are the kind of like ways that European, especially European operators can work together and how they can solve things in the same way. And this, of course, like Philip says, there is an open invitation for anybody to join. Um, that then with the cooperation with the upstream projects like Anucat is extremely important, what we see as well. And that, uh, that we can basically look at how do we use cloud and how do we are how we are compatible with it, uh, cloud infrastructure in the um, um, in the teleco space looking at that not only from the cloud infrastructure perspective but looking at it also from the uh, cloud network functions or cloud native network functions CNF perspective as well is important so we are very excited to be in this project and we are very excited about seal and if you could summarize very quickly before we jump to the sustainability and energy efficiency part of this conversation, very quickly, what are your thoughts on the prerequisites, the core pillars that will make uh, Project Silva a success? Yeah. Okay, I can start. So um, I think that there are several pillars. The, the, definitely the first one for me is about Measuring, measuring, uh, having the information about where we, what what we can make more sustainable. Basically, the second one is uh, in traditional um, telco environment, the part of the idle part of the system is too much important. So, so we need to reduce this. We need to have, I would say, a, a better dense capacity of the the compute dense density. So, for all those reasons, at the end, it's a better management of the underlying hardware. And I think that with Silva and with the current mood in which we are, we are in a position to um, define a new way of designing uh, architecture that will put, I would say, the sustainability by, by book and by design in the story. And that's why we need to have such a project. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so looking at both uh, the kind of like the sustainability part, but also Silva as a whole a little bit here. Uh, so of course, Silva as a whole, I think that what we often do in Nokia, how do we look at if something can be successful is, uh, and especially in open source, that first of all, you need a, um, a common problem that you think that needs solving. Um, and then you, what you need after that is that a common commonality on that that this is a problem actually that um, it's something that the industry needs to solve and we are the right people to solve it. Then look at that, that there is a basically an, um, the timing for that right is right and the governance for that is right. And that is basically something that looking at those, when those things come together, you usually have a successful project. I think that with Silva, we're getting there and we kind of like, we have a common problem we have alignment on how to solve that. We have support on kind of like off the companies, like Philip said, there are already 160 people getting into active there. So we have the support. So therefore the timing must be right. And of course we selected Linux Foundation partly for that because it is actually an um, has neutral and uh, good governance for open source projects. Then coming to the sustainability part here, um, the things that Philip said are extremely important. And what we think that we need to look at, at really building metrics of how we, uh, how we follow that what is the energy consumption of the actual um, CNF. How do we go, um, penetrate through that, that we see that what are the kind of like, um, what are the differences of that, that what is uh, different kind of like abstraction layers in the cloud and see that we're really kind of like what is the energy consumption of a single CNF. And then we can, when we can measure it, then we can see how we can optimize that as well. Yeah, and, um, just, to, just to layer on top of that, uh, um, I 
would have said almost everything you said as well, um, so I'll not repeat it. But uh, I think there is one particular thing that Silva is doing very well right now, uh, which is uh, looking, spending a lot of time on consumability. Because at the end of the day, this is about building software or integrating software into a system that can actually be used. And uh, if you look at some of the earlier initiatives, what I find good about Silva is that uh, the Silva stack, as, ex as it exists today, is very consumable. It has good documentation. It has a, a, an easily understandable structure. Um, there is uh, the, the, the team in Working Group 1 has spent a lot of time thinking about how can we structure uh, the system so that it is extensible and that it can be consumed in a modular, in a modular way. So uh, I think that is what uh, um, makes Silva, uh, what gives Silva better chances of success than maybe some of the earlier initiatives, because it is tangible. It can be used, uh, and it's, it doesn't take a lot of effort to actually get a running system. And so now, with environmental sustainability in, in the cloud ecosystem, we see things happening Things were very different a year ago to six months ago to three months ago. We see the environmental sustainability tag in the CNCF. We have a, a sustainability subgroup in the GitOps working group as well, where we are measuring the energy efficiency of different um, GitOps uh, uh, architectures. And there are tools such as Kepler, which is an open source tool uh, maintained by Red Hat, where, uh, which is to measure the energy consumption per, uh, per pod or namespace. It exports data. Um, it's an eBPF-based tool, so it exports data to Prometheus on the energy consumption of resources that it can link to, to pods and, and namespaces and, and nodes as a whole. Uh, we also see the Green Software Foundation uh, that is now currently working on a software ca a carbon intensity index that is going to be a ISO standard very soon. And so with all that said, um, that is on the, the cloud native kind of evolution of, of green ops, uh, which is kind of the new term for this. Uh, it's not particularly new, but it's gaining traction. Um, but with all of that in mind, Project Silva is in a unique uh, uh, position to drive a cloud native stack for telcos that puts energy efficiency and sustainability at, its, uh, at the core. Um, and with that in mind, what do environmentally sustainable operations look like um, um, for, for telcos and what steps can be taken uh, in this transition and how can Project Silva help with this? Um, I think here that um, we, we must spend time on what matters the most. And um, w when you take into account the different level of the scope one, the scope two, and the scope three, for instance, in telco environment, scope one and two is at best 15%. It means that scope three is 85%. When you have the 85% on scope three, it's, uh, I would say, the mammoth is the hardware and the software is the mice. So basically, uh, we need to turn off the infrastructure if we want to win the battle of the sustainability. So here, what is interesting uh, with, the, with this approach, uh, with this cloud native approach by book is to, I would say, uh, augment the compute density to lower the form factor on the hardware side. And um, to do so, uh, I think that something that is extremely important is that we need uh, to deploy on top of our infrastructure, I would say, more fine grain or more modular, I would say CNF. That because from if we take into account from the from the past and from the from the legacy, uh, we are mainly I would say manipulating uh, something that are very big and very monolithic, and it's not so easy to make them scale up and scale down. So so power off and power up. So I think that it's really important to understand where we need to spend time first. And I mean. Is it, it's working okay so I mean just making sure we use the existing capabilities of the stack right I mean uh, 
the introduction of the separation of infrastructure layer and the application on top that we're getting through the introduction of cloud native principles unlocks a lot of potential for energy savings but we haven't actually as an industry not really started utilizing that at least not to the full extent and um, figuring out how to do that is something that a project like Silva can uh, can facilitate significantly because it needs to be done in in a way that uh, is, is essentially a shared approach across the industry because that's the only way we can um, get enough muscle behind the initiative. Um, if we approach this problem in uh, basically the same way as we uh, originally approached the integration challenge for telco cloud infrastructure in general, which started about 10 years ago, roughly, um, it will just be too late to enable the operators to fulfill their uh, carbon footprint reduction targets. So we have to start using what is available today and um, we have to actually industrialize that. And that is uh, what I'm excited about uh, in, in the working group four in Silva. Uh, a project like Silva can make the difference in, in, in such an undertaking. Yeah, I'm mean, like when you said that it's about 10 years that when we started to kind of work on this, I, I thought that no, now Tim is kind of like mistaken. It can't be that long, but no, it actually is that long. It is over 10, or it's about 10 years. It's nine, 10 years now. Anyways, um, so um, most probably kind of like everything has been said, but not by, by everybody. So I will speak a little bit about this as well. So I, I think that what Tim said, and I'll build on that, it's really important that we understand that what we measure and what we measure the same things. We understand that there is a commonality in this and we basically work together on the kind of like that we get the right kind of like measurements. We get the right kind of like, uh, we understand that what we're comparing are really the same things and we have a common approach. And this is very important in this. And the way is kind of like, um, and that we don't get different kind of approaches where we then don't actually gather their data in the same way that we don't understand it in the same way. Um, this is, I, I think this is extremely important in this and this is where they kind of like where open source can standardize approaches on um, how to move forward and especially in the kind of like sustainability part and in energy uh, consumption uh, in particularly now here is basically something that there is work to be done and there is an open and uh, there is work that uh, is not that much addressed in other places yet um, especially what to, comes to the telco area and uh, yeah I think one more kind of piece of information that I wanted to share with you all is also the Green Software Foundation has a catalog of cloud patterns um, for reducing and optimizing around energy consumption and for sustainability. So it will be really interesting to see how um, these different open source communities can work together to um, share information about these optimizations uh, for th this use case, as well as uh, there's a white paper that the environmental sustainability tag just published uh, today um, that uh, also covers a lot of tools um, and studies and initiatives around this as well. Um, so with that in mind, what are the challenges that exist currently um, that limits this transition to sustainable operations? What, what are some of these challenges and, and how could they be overcome? Well, um, in, in my mind, being, um, so I, I always, I mean, in our discussions, I'm always the sort of the, the, the person that tries to uh, do, tries to approach things from a pragmatic point of view, like what is it that we can actually do? And I think the, the biggest barrier of um, actually creating, let's say, automation to automatically minimize the energy consumption of infrastructure is that we don't have standardized uh, ways of collecting data and actually defining metrics. Data availability is the starting point for any kind of automated, um, any kind of automation loop that can, for example, turn off things at night or can enable the network to 
uh, allocate capacity uh, according to traffic patterns and all that. And we in the telco industry, we've, we've known for decades that traffic patterns basically follow human behaviors at least most of the time. Uh, now with the, uh, with the advances in IoT, that starts to break up a little bit, but there are still temporal, uh, spatial and temporal patterns of traffic that um, create a lot of potential for energy savings. But knowing where energy consumption occurs, when does it occur and why does it occur, is what we on, on the scale of an entire network cannot really determine today. Uh, because every network is a multi-vendor infrastructure, and um, there is not enough commonality across vendors to really answer those questions on a network level today. I mean, I, I think Philippe will probably agree, it's for an, for an operator, it's really, really challenging to, to tell at a given point in time, how much energy does my network consume and why? Which, which part of the utilization is causing which part of the energy consumption? And that is the problem that we need to solve first, and then we can build automation on top of that um, information availability. But as, as Jonas said, we have to standardize this so that we can compare apples to apples and then we need to, to start building technology that can act based on that information. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, and the kind of like building on that uh, great thing that Tim said is uh, that uh, and we need to understand really kind of like which layer uses uh, which layer is um, consuming energy at what point. So we need to also kind of like model that, that how much actually the CNF is using, how much are the infrastructure is using, and what are the other services using around it. I'm mean, like, um, Philip already talked about this a little bit earlier, that how much of the energy is actually consumed by the um, network function as in general. And this is quite small when you think about uh, that already 10% is just kind of like of the electricity is used for tran uh, actually transporting the energy itself. Thir around 30% is used for by kind of like components that really don't do networking like power, uh, um, uh, kind of like um, uh, uh, kind of heating, cooling, power and so on. And even after that, around 20% is then used uh, for like uh, ventilators and so on. And so that is kind of like something that um, we really need to get to the bottom of this. And of course, in the cloud, it is a little bit more difficult because you have different layers of kind of like abstraction. So you need to know what you measure that you're not measuring the wrong thing there. And this is something that um, also that when we're building uh, kind of like what Tim said about automation that can help us with this. Um, so for instance, we see as a company that uh, the role of AI of actually um, of kind of like looking for that, where, how energy can be saved um, is very important, but AI is useless without data. So we need to get the right data, really to the bottom of the right data. Yeah. And so the, the, the tool also, uh, Kepler, it does use, uh, it, it, there's, they're working, Red Hat and IBM and also Intel, and with also my help at WeWorks, we're working on, um, <laughs> uh, a model, a machine learning model to, everybody clap, I'm kidding. They are clapping uh, for you. <laughs> yeah. <I'm an> <laughs> so uh, we're, there's a model to predict these patterns of energy consumption and see how to be able to reduce this, etc. But of course, machine learning models have their own um, carbon footprint. Uh, so. Lastly, I really wanted to ask you about, because um, we're talking about operating models quite a lot here, like uh, green ops and uh, fin ops as well is relevant, since fin ops, uh, which looks at um, financial cost, uh, can also be used to kind of infer uh, carbon emissions and energy consumption in that if you reduce the financial costs, Potentially, this could, uh, uh, yeah, this could mean a reduction in, in emissions if if that comes from uh, optimization, resource efficiency, etc. So, um, 
with these operating models uh, that Project Silva aims to consolidate, um, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about what you think um, they mean for telco operations. And Philippe, if you'd like. Yeah, okay. I, I think that uh, it's why I, I don't want to answer on the previous question because uh, for me, something that is very important is that by design, Silva Project, uh, I would say, uh, has integrated the GitOps approach. So we are using. Flux CD, for instance, and something that is really interesting is that basically, um, I, I love the, the 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 slide from Vukt, the first one. Case is complicated, but in telco, it's more complicated than than ever. And I think he's right. We need to manage two very difficult challenges: complexity and scalability. And GitOps is the perfect fit for this. You mentioned that uh, about Project Kepler, for instance. Uh, my my partner in crime described the importance of, I would say, having the right metering, the right measures, and with the right semantic. And something that is really interesting: we all know the property of GitOps and its ability to uh, tie the operation, the deployment, and the operation about the infrastructure, about the application, about the policy, and we can do as well the same for the sustainability because uh, we can manage the desired state, we can manage uh, the drift that we will um, that we will measure, I would say, uh, live in the reconciliation loop. So GitOps for me is something absolutely funda fundamental and it's a relationship with a kind of triangle. So we have the GitOps that enable, I would say, the FinOps because the cost is a very interesting proximity because ma mastering the cost will have a direct impact on sustainability, so it opened the, it opened the doors about the green up. So for me, uh, the, the, the magic triangle is about the get ups, the fin ups, and the green, green ups, who are definitively, um, I'm pretty sure, uh, a very big impact in the operational model. And the operational model, I think, is um, important because uh, the auto healing and the self capability in terms of uh, resiliency of the infrastructure um, will definitively lead to new way of uh, operating, uh, I would say, tel telco cloud or what, whatever networking uh, infrastructure. Um, so yes, I think that we, we used to have the, what, what we may call the, the SRE in the digital world. We will have the NRE in the network or telco, telco world. So yes, I think that GitOps is, um, is, is a core pillar of the success of the project Silva. I mean, just to layer on top, um, I think the um, the fundamental principle behind Kubernetes-based infrastructure is the operator pattern, which uh, is essentially a reconciliation b between actual state and wanted state, and that concept lends itself very well to energy consumption optimization too. Right? So we have the prerequisites, we have the tools available, we just have to start using them. And um, again, uh, Silva is in a good place or Silva is a good place to do this together as an industry because that's what's going to make, uh, make the whole undertaking successful in the end. Yeah, and looking at that, I kind of like, basically Silva is a great place for looking at this from the teleco perspective. And, um, <clears throat> and that's what we're going to do there as well. One thing that I think that Nikki just said a little bit earlier is about the other activities that are work happening in, in other places like CNCF and so on. We have to also in Silva be clear that we don't do this in isolation and that we're in connection with the other industries that are trying to um, reach uh, towards the same goals as well. So Silva is a good place for us to kind of like as an industry to get together. But we of course should never forget that the cooperation with the kind of like other industries and the uh, other players that are also um, working in the in similar kind of environments. And to close this off, I think it would be really great to have a note on what to take away from this. From my side, um, I really wanted to mention that there, you know, it's important to note there is regulation also. Um, that has been implemented in the EU, and there's uh, some, uh, such as it's the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, EU CSRD, um, as well as uh, in the US, there's the e uh, SEC Climate Disclosure Rule. So there are things that will happen you know, in 2025, and the tools that we are discussing are also kind of being built um, 
in advance with these things in mind, um, where scope one, scope two, and scope three carbon emissions will have to be reported by um, especially publicly traded companies. So the tools for, you know, these cases that will be in two or three years from now are being built today, and we're working, you know, to, to prepare for these uh, uh, things that will come. But um, from your perspectives, what is one thing that you would like to, uh, the audience to take away from this about Project Silva and uh, the cloud native telco stack that we're building? Uh, two words, join us. <laughs> And uh, I think my, my main takeaway is, or what, what I would like everybody to take away is, um, we have to make progress fast as an industry. The regulation Nikki uh, is mentioning uh, is heading our way, and we don't have enough time to use the usual length of our innovation cycles to solve this problem. So we have to start, I mean, there, there are lots of, longer term initiatives and uh, concepts coming that will make things easier over time. But the time scale in which uh, regulation is likely going to be put in place are shorter than those cycles likely will be. So uh, my, my pledge would be, let's start with the technology that we have today. Let's apply it to this problem. There is a lot that can be gained already now and let's work together to make that happen. Um, Let's, if, if everybody stays in their own silo, we will be much less successful than we possibly could be. Yeah, as a company, Nokia, we are um, underlying very much sustainability, and this is something that we feel very passionate about. And that's why we're really proud that we get the chance of um, kind of like leading the working group four here, which is the energy efficiency working group. Um, so about saying about time, I would add to that it's not only the regulation, it's the planet itself that is kind of like we need to move fast. And for that, I really would like to say, uh, conclude on that what uh, Philip said, please join us. This is great, exciting work. We're great, exciting people and please join us and let's make it happen. I don't know if we have time for questions. Uh, do you think we have time for? We have to stop. There. We have to stop. Yeah. But you can find us um, afterwards, and you can talk to us the, and join the one, Slack. And no, no, it's working. <laughs> they just need to activate it. Um, unfortunately, we are uh, uh, just now behind the schedule a bit, uh, so we'll need to do the Minutes. closing remarks. Yes. Or, uh, yep. I would say let's continue with the Q&A uh, later today in the event and in, in the post, but uh, uh, we have a closing and then we are uh, free to go for lunch. Okay. Thank you.